In this video, we will be using Rolle's theorem. Rolle's theorem states, if f is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and differentiable on the open interval from a to b, and if f of a is equal to f of b, then there's at least one number c in the open interval from a to b, such that f prime c is equal to zero. So basically this is stating that if a and b are here and the y value associated with a is equal to the y value associated with b. In other words, f of a and f of b are the same y value. Then there's at least one number c that's in this interval so that the derivative of the function evaluated at c is going to be equal to zero. So if we have a function that goes through both of these points and these two points are the same y value, basically what they're saying is there's going to be at least one point where the slope of the tangent line to the curve is equal to zero. So it should make sense that um, if you're going to hit both of these points, that your curve is going to have to make a U-turn and come back around and go through the second point. So it may be up above, like I've shown here, or it may be down below. Um, it may be more than one place. So our function may do a couple of bumps. But Rolle's theorem guarantees that there's at least one place where we will hit uh, a max or a min, and uh, the derivative will be zero. All right, so in our first example, we're asked to find the two x-intercepts of the function f of x equal x squared minus 3x plus 2, and then show that the derivative is equal to zero at some point between those intercepts. All right. So to find our x-intercepts, remember we let y equal 0. So we'll take our function and we'll replace f of x with 0. And we'll have 0 is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2. Um, this trinomial factors nicely. So we have x and x, 2 and 1. Both of these have to be negative in order to get a positive 2. And then check to make sure negative 2x and a negative 1x does add up to give me a negative 3x. Now remember, if you can't get it factored quickly, then use quadratic formula. That'll work all the time. So if 2 factors multiply together to give me 0, then one of them equals 0, or the other equals 0. Add 2 to both sides for this one, we get x is equal to 2, and add 1 to both sides on this one, we get x is equal to 1. So my two intercepts are 2 and 1. Okay. The second part of the problem says to show that f prime of x is equal to 0 at some point between these intercepts. Now, let me point out that if you have an intercept at 1, and an intercept at 2, in both of those cases, 
the y value is equal to 0. So we can apply Rolle's theorem. We know that there's going to be at least one. where f prime c is equal to 0. And um, it doesn't say to find it, but we can find it, and that'll show that it does occur. The derivative of f, let me copy f again, f is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2. So our derivative is 2x minus 3. Now if we set that equal to 0, 2x minus 3 is equal to 0, 2x is equal to 3, so x is equal to 3 halves. So then our second part of our problem states f prime of x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 3 halves. Let's do another problem involving Rolle's theorem. In this next example, we're letting f of x equal x to the fourth minus 2x squared. And we're asked to find all values of c in the interval from negative 2 to positive 2, such that f prime of c is equal to 0. In order to use Rolle's theorem, We need for f of negative 2 to equal f of positive 2, because those are the endpoints of the open interval that we're investigating. So we can check to see if this is true. Um, f of negative 2 would be negative 2 raised to the fourth power minus 2 times negative 2 raised to the second power. This is 16. Subtract 8, which is 8. And then f of 2 is going to be 2 to the fourth power minus 2 times 2 to the second power, which is also 8. So we know then by Rolle's theorem that there will be at least one one C value. in this interval from negative 2 to 2, such that the derivative evaluated at c is equal to 0. Our next step is to find the derivative. f prime will be, let me just use the power rule, 4x to the third power. minus 4x to the first power. And then we want to set this equal to 0. And find the x values that make this happen. I can factor 4x out.
And then this is the difference of squares. So I have 4x times the quantity x plus 1, x minus 1. And so we know then that if factors multiply together to give me 0, then one or another or all is equal to 0. So 4x equals 0 or x plus 1 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. So divide both sides by 4 here, we get x is equal to 0. Subtract 1 from both sides here, so x is equal to negative 1. And add 1 to both sides here, we get x is equal to 1. So these are the values of x. Therefore, the C values that cause the derivative to be equal to zero.